Welcome to today's episode for people interested in the extraordinary yet ancient and often long forgotten stuff. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald from ownbythebeach.com. Our guest today is Stephanie Lane Jarkob. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Joseph. <laughs> it's a great honor to have you on my show. I mean, it's, it's uh, very impressive that uh, you. your work and um, today we are talking about the feminine principle in the Tao Te Ching. A lot of my audience are very familiar with the Tao Te Ching. It's, uh, there are 400 translations altogether of it. But uh, I've never heard there was a, a translation, and you wrote a translation, uh, just for inspiring women. So that's what we are going to talk today and a lot more. And uh, so Stefan Elaine Yapro. PhD is an author, developmental psychologist, spiritual facilitator, clairvoyant, and speaker. Stephanie works with boundaries and identity, formation, maintenance, management, transformation, and transcendence, asking the question, what does it mean to be fulfilled? Helping people discover their self-knowledge and truth. She is the founder of the Feminine Light Method, a system for self-discovery, knowledge, and realization leading to enlightenment. And uh, there is a lot more to her biography, and I will have it in the show, in the show notes. But uh, I would love to get started right away with this dialogue, this discussion, because it's very close to my heart. We're talking about the Tao Te Ching. The Feminine Light, the Tao Te Ching for Inspiring Women, which is the first translation of this work specifically written for women by a woman, since the 6th century BC, as well as the foundational principles of the feminine light brand, the beauty of masculine, feminine, polarity, and the unity of life. Stephanie, what made you decide to write a new translation of the Tao Te Ching? Hey, Joseph. Um, well, that was written in 2011, and, that, and at that time... Um, I was actually, uh, and I and I say this in the in the book, but my mother had given me, gosh, um, years years earlier, maybe fifteen years earlier, a Stephen Mitchell copy and of the Tao Te Ching. My mother gave it to me as a gift, and when I was uh, working with it, I wanted to actually put it in into a program, into a, like a software program. And um, a friend of mine said, well, rather than you've been working with it for so long, rather than using someone else's interpretation, why don't you just write your own? So that's what I did. And I always put kind of my original spin on things. So it's set up in a way that you have the verses, but you also have questions underneath to get you into each verse. Yes. Well, it's for, in my experience, the Tao Te Ching, the Chinese, and particularly the Chinese notions of, uh, you know, there are many. Let's let's start with the Tao or the Yin and the Yang or the Wu Wei, you know, and and there are many more Li, you know, all these notions. I mean, these are kind of like uh, characters in China, in Chinese and Chinese language, which we don't often know from the West that they are actually not like an alphabet. They are they are actually uh, an image they, they're painting images and they put those images together and so there is this notion um painted in different images and from there there are you can go all around and you can have like a hundred of interpretations of it it's very flexible ambiguity i think it's the purpose of it because like we we want to say you know this is the truth you know and we want to nail it down and we want to say i have it i have the truth whereas you know this is like purposefully made like ambiguous so when you talk about those things like the tao you know or yin or yang and and, and notions then it's purposefully written so you know you can look at it from many many sides you know almost like uh, you know that fable of the i don't know six or seven blind men who uh, were blind and they were touching the elephant, you know, it's a Hindu story. And right. um, everybody 
uh, described the elephant, ultimate reality, metaphorically speaking, in different ways, because one was touching the trunk, the other one the leg, and the other one was touching his belly, and they were all describing it differently. But nobody was wrong, but nobody had the absolute truth either. Well, so, it's, interesting yeah. you, it's interesting that you say that. I, My experience of life, and I've always... Um, Basically, to me, life is all about identity, and I've always been fascinated by life. My background, I come from an artistic um, family where boundaries weren't clear, Mm -hmm. and so I sort of made it my mission to really create a strong foundation for myself. And in terms of what you were saying about the elephant and, and, and that story is I, my sense is that there is truth, but our experience as human beings is relative to the truth because we're all in different um, forms or states of evolution. And so we can understand our experience through that. Yes. Yes, we definitely all have a unique point of reference. I think it's also kind of like a space-time event, uh, who we are. Because where you were born and when you were born, if I would be born exactly where you were born and when you were born, I would be very similar to you. I believe. You know, because ultimately this is a... For me? (laughs) (laughs) So would you... Okay, I'm just going to play with you now. So would you be a woman... Well, I try being a man, but you know, I don't have prejudice. I mean, if I come again to this world, I can. I, I, I was probably a woman before, also, you know, in other in other uh, birth situations. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I you know, I, I just uh, I would say the life experience has to be similar. You know, when you look at Yin and Yang, uh, Stephanie, the literal translation of it from the Chinese, as I read and when I studied it, was. Yeah. That uh, yin and yang means nothing else but the sunny and the shadow side of the mountain. So, uh, you know, when you are on the sunny side, you might get hot sometimes, you know, you might get um, bored sometimes, you know, it's a lot of things happening on the sunny side of the mountain. But then you go to the shadow side of the mountain and you refresh again. It's nice and cool. And maybe it's darker, maybe you have more privacy. So, you know, then you go back to the sun and say, it's, it's really a game. And that is the whole notion for me of the Tao and the yin and yang, because it's something is always missing somewhere. The other one has it. It's almost like in chemistry, in water. Water is very important, like the H2O, do elements, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, of, uh-huh. of hydrogen and oxygen, right? And oxygen, that's missing something. So they get together, and hydrogen has it, they get together. It's about an electron. This oxygen swirls around. But that's the whole world. The whole life is like this. It's like you said it in your uh, biography. It's the beauty, what fascinates me also, the beauty of the polarity. Because yeah. all of those polarities, the yin and yang, it's multidimensional yin and yang. I mean, it's not just feminine and, and, and masculine. This is like everything is divided. And why? Ultimately, it's of course one, bonus, but it's divided for the cosmic game to the show, to go on. Because you go to the, into the forest and you see these beautiful insects. And, and birds, and they are visiting those flowers. And isn't that all beautiful? And it's all because of this yin and yang, you know? Yes, the polarities of life, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, what made you write this book, uh, Four Women, uh, a new translation of the Tao Te Ching? And, and how would you describe it? What is the difference? Why is it different to you? Well, I explained what inspired me to write it um and the difference is having to do with those um those questions that i add at the end of each verse to help the questions yes and understand it but um speaking of the the dao and polarities of life 
Um, I think it's really my, really a dance of yes. these polarities mm -hmm. um, and a way of bringing them together that creates union and health. It's really about wholeness and health. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, there's a, I, I, I want to bring up something around polarities that seems to be kind of a, a accepted these days that, that men and women are both masculine and feminine, have masculine and feminine polarities uh, within themselves. And I, I believe they do, but men represent masculine, women represent feminine. The difference though, for me, is that within a woman, the masculine is actually having a consciousness, not, not being like a man or uh, having uh, uh, the same uh, sort of model of a being in the world or um, action or linear processing and getting things done. Um, it's not that, it's really having a consciousness, a light, so to speak, of a woman's worth. Whereas for men, I think the feminine within a man is actually having a consciousness of his care, what he cares about. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of make that distinction a little bit in terms of the way I kind of view, <laughs> the way I kind of view things. I remember somebody I read in the Tao Te Ching what Lao Tzu said, and I don't know the exact quote, um, be as a man, my 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 guidance would be be the yang, no knowing the yin. So you are one as a man if you are the yang, but always being aware of the yin because you're both. You just have one more expressed. So the game, the world exists because ultimately, it's. It's not very different. I, my existence, my ontological being cannot be different from a woman's, you know. Um, it's ultimately you go above those characteristics when you come to your ontological being, your metaphysical self. Are you talking about the oneness of life, the unity consciousness? Well, I think, you know, when I, I think, um, yeah, absolutely. When you are, when you are thinking about, let's say, what the, 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 Tibetan Buddhists in the Tibetan book of the living and the dead um, describe as the blue light, which, you know, when you go to the new um, spiritual teachers like Eckhart Tolle talking about pure consciousness, this kind of awareness, which, which is you, but which doesn't have an object. Like now we have awareness, but it's, you know, we have consciousness and there is, it's, it's often, we, we have uh, objects tied to it, but when you come to your own self, self-referral, when you are like suchness, who you are, the way you are, and you experience that being, I don't think there can be much difference between a man and a woman. Mm, see, I, see I, <laughs> on that one, uh, all my work is, um, is looking really deeply um, at identity and, my background uh, being uh, my work with my doctoral work in boundaries, identity formation, maintenance management, and then later um, uh, transformation and transcendence. And I really studied for about 30 years after my degree, um, women's identity, because mm -hmm. it wasn't really, it, it's not really established as a man's identity. Um, for me, the experience is, is very separate. Um, and it's understanding to me, it's understanding these, these different identities that allows us to come together in health. So um, for instance, um, with women, um, let's see, where am I going with this? With women, um, what did you say, Joseph? What did you say? Because there was something that that just went well, like. Well, I, I what's in the difference between men and women? Well, I said ontologically, like in terms of who I am, and mm -hmm. who are you. When we go to the deep meaning of 
not meaning of exper experience of the, the amness, the amness, who I am, I am. I think the more metaphysical you go, the more the less the less differentiated can it can it be uh, to be a man or a woman. I think. Okay, so so my uh, my take on that is that in terms of there's unity consciousness. That's mm -hmm. like everything is one. Yes. And that's all of being and doing and and everything. It's unity consciousness. It's the higher consciousness, and then there's our sense of self in terms of being human, our humanity, um, which, which there's no distinction in our humanity. But then when we move into our identities, specifically the division between the polarities between masculine and feminine, I think there's very much, uh, very much a difference. And uh, it's, it's not understanding that difference that I think is creating a lot of chaos and a lot of darkness. Mm -hmm. um, in my book, I speak about the difference between men and women. Um, and I talk about how women are spirit and men have spirit. So women are the, are, basically are the principle of being. And men are the principle of doing, and there's a there's a distinction um, there's a distinction between men and women. Women are sort of the messengers of a higher power, and men apply those messages. That's that's my that's yeah, my and you know it's it's interesting, Stephanie, because you know. I, I read a lot uh, of uh, myth about mythology by Joseph Campbell, and uh, his conclusion is that the feminine, the mother goddess, and not just his conclusion, it's it's also in the scriptures, like Hinduism and all this, the mother goddess, she can uh, command all the gods around, you know, and uh, the gods are just dust compared to the mother goddess, you know, like Indra, the god of fire, you know, and, and, and the point, there are stories about this where really they are nothing, compared to the mother goddess. And so his his, his idea in mythology right. is also that uh, the mother goddess is really the feminine principle. It's really like it stands above all else. And in the Tao Te Ching, again, when you look at the first verse, you see right away, uh, you know, um, the Tao that, cannot, that can be named is not the eternal Tao. But then it goes a little bit further down in the verses and it says, and then from one... Uh, comes two and then three and then the 10,000 things and the mother of all things the mother of all things is very prominent in there in the first paragraph of the Tao Te Ching the mother of all things so now I do understand there is this difference there must be this difference but it's not just like the difference of masculinity and femininity it seems to be that the mother goddess that feminine origin that you know you could compare it with that void, that emptiness, which the feminine represents as well. That's where man and woman come from. I mean, it's not just like that the woman can identify with this. The man can also identify with it, I believe. You know, it's like the woman definitely has distinctions. Uh, the man is, has distinctions. Man and woman, they play their parts, their roles in this life. Yet the origin comes from the feminine principle for both. There is, of course, no man in this world who wasn't born from a, a woman. So in, a, in fact, you know, we are like, you know, 90% woman also because we are born from a woman, right? And, uh, well, you know, but I, I, I don't see it like, I, I, I don't think we should really, um, I, I, I wouldn't uh, identify too much with this masculine and the feminine as i said you know it, it says somewhere in the Tao Te Ching that like it applies to the woman also you know being yin knowing yang because the woman can be very masculine as well and as you say in in spiritual in in, in sexual orientations all of those combinations are played out basically uh, sometimes a very masculine woman will meet a very feminine man they will be very happy together because it's just like that spectrum, right? And the other way around too. Uh, so I don't know. 
about I, identification. I, I, I'm, I have my doubts about identification because I, I don't myself. I don't. I'm not much of an identify. I don't have to identify with my body. I don't identify with my mind. I don't identify with my thoughts. In fact, you know, I, I think identifications are often in the way to spirituality. It's like a block to spirituality. It's blocking it. Uh, um, I hope I'm not challenging too much you know, with you. There, you have a piece. couple things I wanted to say. Joseph, there's a couple things I wanted to say. One is that not all women, I, I mean, when I, when I speak, I'm not doing... Um, black and white. I know there's there's a whole lot of variety in life, but um, boundaries tends to be an issue more for women because they are spirit than for men who have spirit. So to start there, but the other thing that I wanted to bring up was that uh, was basically past life uh, reincarnation. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, my work in the Feminine Life brand, there's there's basically it's um, what it is, is five truths and they're experientials that I walk people through. Um, the first two are the divine purpose activation method and then the divine light activation method. And with the divine purpose activation method, I get into past lives and I, and I, I I've been clairvoyant since my early thirties and it's been all like my experience of understanding connections. And then just in the last couple of years, I realized, oh, I'm supposed to use it for other people as well. <laughs> and so I, I put this divine purpose activation method together that brings up, I use my clairvoyance and I work with dreams with people and I establish uh, they have five past life contracts. Now, those past life contracts um, can be masculine or feminine. So a person who has these contracts, they can have things, uh, a, a woman can have a masculine contract that needs to be evolved, or a man can have a feminine contract that needs to be evolved. Um, or any combination thereof, because there's a lot. To, I mean, to, yeah, that that gets into a whole nother conversation. But um, in, in terms of understanding unity consciousness and how we all can experience, especially in the alternative community, um, they very much know that there's some semblance of contracts going on. Other people maybe can feel it. Um, but maybe are not necessarily sure of what they're supposed to do with it or, or what makes sense um, out of it. But uh, it's, it's really, it's kind of fascinating to, to realize, and it's a whole different consciousness. It's like, we're talking about taking unity consciousness to a whole nother level of our experience in the world. If we realize for instance, that our consciousness and our makeup is not only our individual unique light, but we have a party within us. We're never alone. We've, always, we've, we've got at least five contracts that we're doing in this life together. So there's always five other people connected to us uh, that we are to evolve. And I can go into past life and my distinctions there, but, but I don't think this is the exact uh, time for that. But uh, essentially the consciousness is if we all are connected and we carry with us uh, um, sort of an evolutionary consciousness, then our experience together, understanding we are made up in a different way than we originally thought. It's not just us. It's, it's we are a continuation of evolution through these contracts. It really changes the dynamic of a darkness, um, like emotional issues like fear and shame and guilt. And I mean, I can go on in, in, in terms of what emotional darkness feels like. And it's, you know, it's not particularly pleasant and, and that darkness is to be brought into the light, the feminine light, because yes, 
in terms of polarities, it all begins with the feminine, with 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 the mother. Yes. So yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry, I'm, I'm really passionate about this. <laughs> yeah. So how did you come to know about those contacts, those five contacts? You, you, you see what, into the spirit world? or what, what, what I do is I work with people, groups or individuals. Um, it just depends on how much. Uh, some people prefer a group experience because it makes them feel more comfortable. Some people prefer an individual experience because it's they really are committed to what they're doing. Um, but... What it is, is is I go through a process, it's, uh, I've done it in five weeks, and I'm expanding it to eight weeks now, where people, uh, there are certain questions that I ask, Mm -hmm. and they they write down their dreams, because the dreams are messages. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be processing, you know, daily stuff, but really what they are, are messages from these contracts. And what we do is we create a relationship with each of the five contracts. And the contracts are, one is on the emotional level, spiritual level, mental level, physical level, and social level. So those are the five different contracts. We have a lot of past lives, but in this life, my working theory that seems to to, uh, be verified (laughs) um, is that we have five contracts. And, you know, I am a developmental theorist, and and this is putting it into application in more of um, working with clairvoyance, because I take the dreams, and then I take these cards that I have developed in order to to have language, language around what I do. And then I move into the contracts, and I ask uh, for each contract, what is the challenge of the contract? the healing, the um, divine purpose, and the evolutionary maturity also expressed the last piece is what is the joy. And so I put language to each of those and I put them to each of the five contracts while they're dreaming and we're talking about these dreams and we're connecting and verifying their 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 sense of these relationships within themselves, separate from themselves, because that allows guilt and shame to be not yours. You're just deciding whether you want to evolve these contracts or not and change the darkness into light. Um, And then basically after that, um, once the five contracts are done, I configure it in a different way. So I was, I'm, basically able to show how each individual comes in the person comes into this life to solve a social problem to contribute light to a social problem and it's laid out in a very simple format what's the social problem or social challenge Um, what's the story behind it the emotional story behind it what's the solution what is the ideal that that each individual is leading us toward uh, as well as the physical manifestation of what this divine purpose is for each individual in their life, um, which is which goes to like self realization essentially. Yes, because I am like, you know, when I talk, when I think about the void, and I think about the contacts, right, and what you just said, and the divine purpose. When I think about the void, which for me is like. Uh, my environment, the environment of human of humans, just like the fish has the environment of the ocean, the water, is not aware of it. Uh, so the human is not really aware of the void out there, everywhere, the void, the space, but that's our environment. When I think about it, I don't see any purpose. I don't see any purpose. I don't see any meaning in it, except... Oh, my goodness, I'm going to cry. <laughs> except, except that I... You know, I, I no, just like everybody else, I, I carry that meaning in me. I carry yes. that purpose in me because yes. I'm not separated from it. I am it, just like yes. everybody else. So we're like a billion ways. The universe looks at, this, at, it, at itself, but it would limit me a lot if I would imagine that there is something out there, like some whiteboard in the sky, 
which says, Joseph, this is your purpose. This is your meaning. It would bother me. I wouldn't believe it because it's either within me, it's outside. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. And so it is with everybody. So they're, the, the life and so, the universe. So I, 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 is, I'm, I'm a little confused on that, but, but okay. It has um, deep meaning. The life and the universe has deep meaning, but the meaning is realized through us, not by finding it somewhere out there. Because our environment that, is the void. That's, that's what you do is you find it within you. It's not, it's. Yeah, yes, yes. It's yes. not outside of you. It is you. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think we yeah. understand each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I wonder also, you know, where, where does this come from? This conceptualization, this idea of contracts, five contracts. I mean, has, has, does it have to do with experience? Does it have to do with imagination? Does it have to do with reality? I don't know. I never uh, remember that I made any contract with anybody. I wouldn't sign it. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Well, that is the choice for us in, in terms of, I mean, any new thought process that changes consciousness, where does it come from? We're all given a gift. So, you know, we all express our gifts and our talents and our contribution to the evolution of humanity in the way that we are. So, um, I mean, you know, the history of thought, you know, the, the art history, oh my God, you know, in terms of uh, looking at the evolution of consciousness. Um, but um, where does it come from? I think I, think I just spoke to that, but um, in terms of what you do with it, we we are as you said we are who we are but if we're aware if we can reach a different level of consciousness move out of darkness into light then essentially we can be more effective in our lives we can be uh more fulfilled because we're aligning actually with ourselves and we're bottom line is we're reducing the latency of light or awareness in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Instead of it taking us 30 years to figure out who we are, or 50 years, or 60 years, or 70 years, we can actually know who we are and, and be self-realized earlier, mm -hmm. which I think leads to greater happiness, which leads to greater peace. And I think... I mean, um, we can even talk about, you know, is peace the ultimate, um, you know, where we're going? I think it is. I think peace and self-acceptance, world peace, all of that peace in, in amongst one another is an ideal. I think that is important mm -hmm. um, rather than continuing the suffering line, you know, the hamster wheel of suffering. Um, I think getting off of that wheel is is pretty pretty important not in not necessarily in oh my god oh my god we're uh, afraid to die but it's just like wouldn't it be nicer if we if we're all happier and more fulfilled and you know got along better <laughs> yeah you see the thing is that we in the west i mean our traditions like the judeo-christian islamic mm -hmm. tradition our philosophies and all this uh, process theology you know and it's really like always has this purpose that the world is going somewhere it's ultimately going to realize heaven or it's returning to paradise whereas the west, the east and uh, i'm not saying i'm not saying but i can i prefer actually in this uh -huh. sense the East, for instance, uh, Hinduism, there is this middling world. This middling world is never be diff is never to go become paradise there in Hinduism, for instance. It's, it's never, never going, be it's never become paradise, this world. It's never going to become paradise. This world, oh. never to become heaven. This world is this world the way it is. And it is that way. So we who live in it, can become enlightened. In other words, we can we can find the middle way, the middle way between the extremes, the polarities, not going to the extreme of one polarity, and staying in the middle. That's more 
depth than I just say staying in the middle, the middle way. It's a very philosophical system if you go into Tibetan Buddhism or if you read Nagarjuna, uh, another Buddha a few hundred years later after Buddha talking about in his books about the middle way. However, there is a huge distinction here, you see. There is this one um, worldview, cosmology, mythology, where the world has to become a better place, where the world has started and it, something went wrong. We want to go back there, you know, original sin, whatever it is. And we want to restore paradise. We pissed off, sorry for the word, we pissed off God is very angry up there. God is against man, man is against women. Uh, men and women are against nature and everything is like against since this conception of this beautiful mythology of God in the Garden of Eden. And uh, harder to understand really, but look at our society. We still want to conquer everything, want to conquer nature. You know, we see everything like uh, as an adversity. But then again, we have also this other worldview. If you were born in India, for instance, or in Tibet, or, you know, even in ancient China, in the, at the time of the Tao Te Ching, they look at the world differently. There was never anything lost in the world. There's never anything. The world is not going anywhere. It's not going to become better. It's not becoming worse. Well, in Hinduism, it becomes worse. It actually gets destroyed after a while. It's this, uh, this yugas, right? And uh, But it's all cyclic. It comes again, and it's forever. So it's not getting bored. So it, it, it's But it's cyclic. Whereas for us, it's always going somewhere. We want to repair the world. We want to return to paradise by becoming less of sinners and all this. Well, I talk, I go on and on and on. But I think you see the distinction here. I, I, I personally, I prefer to, to see the world as an object, an object of my consciousness. And what is real is my consciousness, because when that goes away, then the world definitely is gone also. The mind is is, is within my consciousness, it's not me, produces all these beautiful experiences, uh, all the sensual experiences as well. It's always the mind is involved in it, yet the world is just like a movie. You know, it's like, uh, metaphorically speaking, it's like there's a projector, there's the screen, and there is bloodshed on the screen, there are uh, romantic uh, times on the screen. But you know what? When this movie is over, then all this is gone. And what is left is that pure consciousness. And it never touched me. And it never touches anybody. It's just a divine cosmic drama. It's called a Leela in Hinduism. And I'm not part of any religions. I'm just saying I like to educate myself about it and then think about it uh, philosophically. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to tend, I tend to lean towards this kind of. Uh, worldview, that I am separate, even though I'm completely involved. I mean, my head is in the universe. The universe is in my head. I'm completely in it. However, I also like to see it maybe as a real illusion and not to be taken too seriously, because after all, we all are born, we die, we get reborn maybe, Whatever, right? So it's like I'm not. I don't, I don't like to objectify myself in any way. So I stay away also from my identification. I don't like to identify well, you do myself. Objectify, you do objectify yourself, but it's you only do it with your mind. Yes. So you do do it. It's just you do it with your mind. Yes. Um, and I wanted to just comment on. I don't come from a traditional sort of religious background. Um, I've experienced all forms of uh, religious influence, but not was never trained or socialized in any particular one. I've just sort of experienced even atheism and all sorts of, um, you know, other bits and pieces. But um, I consider myself this term spiritual, which you know, there is, for me, there's a higher power. Um, but so I, I just wanted to say, yeah, so I don't come from, you know, we're sinners and we're, I don't, that's not in my experience at all. Um, and I was just actually talking to a woman about enlightenment the other day, and she comes from a Buddhist tradition. 
And for me, um, the Buddhist tradition in terms of releasing suffering um, transcends, that's transcending in my mind, the evolutionary responsibility of being here. They're, they're, men and women are just in being unity consciousness and they represent that in the world. Um, but I think for most of us, that this experience of life is about, is, is, is either living a, a life of being just a living, a, I want to use the word rote. I don't know if that's the correct word. Um, we're just doing things like we've always done things like we parents have done things and we just don't even question anything. But for those seekers and those who question and who want to understand and have more out of life and create more meaning in their lives, those are the people that fascinate me because they're in search of their light. And to me, that process is about meaning and it is about contributing light into the world rather than letting the world be whatever the greatest influence is going to be at the time because there are influences we're all an influence it's just how are we an influence are we an influence by not doing anything and not being here and not participating or are we an influence because it's all personal gain and 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 it's all about power you know for the individual or is it about the collective and bringing humanity to a level where everyone is feeling better, lighter, happier, safer, all these different things. Yes. I mean, you know, again, a comet could hit the, the earth and we're all gone. So, so, so I, you know, there is something larger outside of ourselves, no matter, you know, no matter what uh, we believe. I agree. I agree because, you know, it's, it's for me, it's also a very important ingredient of enlightenment, which is compassion. A person who is enlightened, and I've interviewed, <laughs> and I've, get, I've gotten to know people like this, um, they have been completely like going out there and, and for some people for years uh, running around enlightened, you know, as, 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 as much as they describe it. Uh, but I sometimes missed one element, and that was they didn't have much compassion. They thought they reached something which others um, looking looking for for the whole lifetime, and they don't reach it. Maybe they have reached it by accident, whatever, when they were twenty five or whatever. But then I find sometimes, you know, enlightenment really means, at least to me, I would like what your definition is. But for me, it it. You know, it's a process. I mean, no, nobody can ever say I'm enlightened. It would be deluded, you know, because um, that would be a delusion to think that we are enlightened. You know, I think uh, what I what I mean by enlightenment is it's a process. It it makes you more sensible to other people's self interest, and you see through their motivations, yet you can compassionately live with those people. It doesn't matter unless they're too toxic. And it means uh, becoming aware of, of uh, for me, it means becoming aware of the process, which is the process of self-discovery, self-knowledge, and suchness that, you know, when people talk so much about reality, you know, ultimate reality and, and all the things out there which you can see with a telescope, you know, and all the things which are told from history, which some shamans uh, said when they were drunk with soma, with psychedelic drinks, whatever, you know, became mythology, some that became even scripture. And, you know, but that's not enlightenment for me because ultimately it is everything, everything must refer to one's own being to one's own ontological being, everything, everything. There is nothing that can be found outside. And you know, what I just recently read, we talk about Taoism by Chuang Tzu. He's going with some guy on a river and he says to him, 
Look at how happy those fishes are, right? Swimming back and forth like darts, you know, being so happy. Then his uh, companion said, how do you know if fishes are happy? How do you know? And well, ultimately, it came to the conclusion of Zhuangzi, uh, which is one of the second biggest legends in China after, after Lao Tzu and then after Confucius. He said, you know, I know that they are happy because I walk the same river and I experience their happiness and joy through my happiness and joy when I walk the same river. And so, you know, we know everything by resemblance. We, all, we know everything from the same side. There's nothing we can discover just outside. We have to first internalize it. And then through resemblance, we get to know how things really are. Right. It's, it's I mean, <clears throat> it's all about self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's part of your methodology. So your methodology as the founder of the feminine light is a system for self-discovery, knowledge, and realization leading to enlightenment. And, you know, we talked about things like enlightenment now, and I do understand what you mean by self-discovery and knowledge a little bit, because ultimately, you know, it's difficult uh, in a short time to really get to know exactly what a person means with those terms. Uh, so what exactly is that method? And people can also uh, find that method on your website, femininelight.com, and get in touch with you if they want to know more about it, right? So yes. could you tell me a little bit more about this method you have developed as the founder of the Feminine Light? Um, well, the, the Feminine Light method is really a divine activation method in five truths. The first one is purpose. Second one is your own individual light. The third is realizing your gender. And that includes the alternative community that might be both masculine contracts and feminine contracts, but it's really understanding the, um, the importance of being one of the polarities or how to combine the polarities within your own life. So there's the divine gender. And then after that is divine union, which is, the, which is how the dance comes together of polarities, mm -hmm. the masculine and mm -hmm. feminine, um, within all of our relative experiences in this, in this journey of life. And then after that, the fifth one is communal. So how do we contribute our light in community and what is that all about mm -hmm. so those are the five different truths of the feminine light path or the feminine light method uh, i'm actually just writing a book right now describing all of them nice. um, um and that'll be called the, the feminine light path um and right now what i'm working with with people is the divine purpose which is the clairvoyance and the past life contracts because i think that's key to releasing darkness and being free to move into your own light which is the second piece which is your own divine light the wisdom of your life whether whether it's the wisdom of self-love or whether it's the wisdom of freedom or the wisdom of um, beauty, it, it, your light has a specific uh, name to it. And again, unity consciousness, there's no need for language. Together, living and being with one another, there's a need for language in order to share. So um, I, I put language to what uh, the past life contracts are and what a person's specific light is, how they uniquely uh, add their light to the world. Yes, so um, I, I, I start with those two. Yes. And then I also it's, do the gender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, you are very feminine. I, I notice it because you're easy to talk to. You're very soft, you know. I love it. You know, the way you talk, you, you have a, a, a strong identity oh, as, as a feminine person. I 
I do understand you now more because about this identification thing. Well, well, you know, the Tao Te Ching, again, it's, it speaks about uh, the mystery of mysteries when you go higher and higher and higher. It's a mystery upon mystery and darkness within darkness, you know. So I, I don't mind so much to see it as a polarity, darkness and light. And uh, because there is no light without the dark, there's no dark without the light. I mean, it really goes together. It's always mutually arising in this kind of uh, scriptures, right? And um, so, yeah, I, I feel a little bit dis a little bit disadvantaged now as a man because you said uh, I no, have I have a spirit, no. and you are a spirit. So, women are spirit, I have a spirit. Now I feel like, what does that mean to me? Now I don't want to be handicapped. You know, I want to be just as empowering as any woman also you know as a man i don't want to say oh i want to be I'm more I want okay to be i'm more. so glad you brought that up i'm so glad you brought that up because that's part in my view that's part of what's going on today is is men are having um difficulties because their role is 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 in chaos because women are taking over their the the masculine role in many ways um oh gosh this is a whole nother this is a whole nother topic but i just want to say <laughs> which i you know this is this is this is super important this topic uh but i just want to say joseph that oh my god you know genuflect i'm you're a man, you're out in the world and you're doing things and you can like make things happen and manifest things. And I mean, this is, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay. No, you're not necessarily the mother. All right. You're the man, you're separate from the mother and you're separate from the mother so that you can go out in the world and do things. Um, and it's, I mean, oh my goodness, are you kidding that is that is so wonderful. That is so wonderful. Yeah, well, there's a lot to learn. Still. And I want to honor you in that, please. You know. Yeah, you made a lot of things like uh, intriguing. I wasn't thinking about those things much anymore, but uh, I think I think it's so valuable to actually uh, use use that opportunity as a man to discover who you are as a man, just the same as a woman. Use the opportunity to discover who is, you know, who you really are as a woman, because you can do it only as a man, in that sense, as a man. But also, you have that um, polarity of the feminine in you as well. I mean, as I said before, you know, in the Tao Te Ching, it says clearly, "Be the young as the man," you know, knowing the, fe the feminine, knowing the yin, and you know, I think the strongest man is the is the man. Who is aware of his femininity, of his vulnerability, but that's not feminine now. But that both of it, it affects both. But you know, if if you look at 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 the softness and hardness and and all these polarities, right? I mean, you have both as a man and you have both as a woman. It just comes out in a spectrum, and that makes that incredible diversity possible. That beautiful variety uh, that all originates from the Yin and Yang principle. Yeah, well, <clears throat> that's how I started this is is making the distinction between the woman using her masculine as her consciousness of light of her worth as a woman, not as a man, as a woman, but the masculine within her is the consciousness of light and of worth. Whereas in a man, the the feminine is the consciousness of care. Not that he's feminine or is a woman, but that he can open his heart and care. Um, there was something else that you said. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, what was it? Um, okay, I lost it. But but yeah, so I so I would make that again. I would make that distinction. Um, between the masculine and feminine, and also referring to, um, you know, it, you're the yang, but honor the yin. Yes. 
and and that's what I was thinking. Um, what is that? What that is is honoring the feminine because it's the feminine that is the mother of all. Not to take away from the man, but it it it, it it's honoring the origin of things. Yes. Yes. You can, uh, as a man, honor yourself and be honored for sure. But it all starts with the feminine. It all starts with honoring the feminine. Okay, but that's that's very Taoist. It's very Taoist, and it's it's you know it's much better than this uh, patriarchal thing with the angry god, you know, from our culture, mm -hmm. who gave you know it, it's like weird. It's weird. The other thing is like more natural. You can understand it because I can understand it because I am the void as well as I am being, I am non being. And the void, all these things, you know, which we always externalize, it's all inside me. And that's where it's, you know, it's the void is like where time and space, it's all just coming together. And, and, and you know, it's very feminine, the void. <laughs> it's nothing. It's, a, it's like, it's like a hole. It's a circle, right? I mean, at the Zen Buddhist circle, you know. I mean, this is very feminine. This is not masculine. That's not a phallus symbol, you know. They they have that also in different religions, like Shiva, mm -hmm. you know, the the Hindu god Shiva, the destroyer and the creator, and, and it's very masculine because he destroys, you know, and he creates, you know. So these are mythologies. It's all referring to who we are, of course, and it's all somehow created sometime long ago by some shamans, and then taken over by priests and then manipulated and misused by some politicians. You know, it's, it's <laughs> was a wonderful uh, um, uh, conversation with you. I really enjoyed it. Um, Likewise, the, Thank you. The feminine principle of in the Tao Te Ching. I think I cannot more agree with you. This is uh, so important that both of us, uh, men and women, understand the importance of the feminine principle uh, because that is... Um, both of us, like uh, before duality even existed, right? Or it, it always existed, let's say like this, but before actually we, we can talk about duality and polarity, there is the feminine principle, you know? The Tao itself is a very feminine thing, you know? It's often described as the flow of water. It flows, but there's no resistance. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it avoids friction, right? Uh, Non-action is a principle there. And and so you know, I mean, and then you when you talk about the, the the masculine, you talk about it very positively, and you see the different aspects of it. And I think that's how it should be. You know, it's very much like you know when you go into the forest or into you know into your garden and you see those beautiful in summertime, you know, those beautiful insects, you know, coming around and the, and the flowers and how this all works together in perfect harmony. And it's all based on that kind of thing. The yin and yang, something is missing. Somebody has it. <laughs> you know, it's like going around and around and around. And it, I think it, this it, is the beautiful what show. Creates wholeness. Yeah, what creates life. Yes, and this is the show we live in. It's a perfect mm -hmm. show, you know. It's a perfect show. Stephanie, we should uh, come to a, an end soon because the podcast is getting a little long for people to listen to. I uh, We have been talking about wonderful things, very interesting things, Steph Stephanie, and I do thank you very much. All of this, uh, the show notes, in the show notes, there will be the, man, the, the website mentioned, thefeminelight.com. I would like to ask you one more time about thefemininelight.com. How would you explain what it does for our listeners? If they visit it, uh, can they find more, find out more about you? Can they take a course? Can they contact you, talk with you? Can you explain a little bit more so about your website? The femininelight.com um, and femininelight.info, actually, they can, if they if they went to, the brand is the Feminine Light. So femininelight.info is where they can actually get the Feminine Light, the Tao Te Ching for inspiring women. And men read it as well i've got i've got men that comment on it and and quite like it um so they can go there for the book it's on amazon um of course <laughs> and um and uh the light.com is basically they can go and it's a process so so they see it it's really the divine activation method right now but it talks about the the other 
um, truths or method uh, aspects. And it walks you through the process to apply for the divine purpose. So that's what that does. Um, and you make an application and then I contact you. Um, so that's what it is. Or, um, yeah, they can also call me if they'd like to ask questions or have more information. And that would be, uh, that's in California and uh, sunny Southern California and uh, in the Palm Springs area. And that's 310-651-0774 is the number. So really uh, awesome Thank interview. You, I, I, I had a very nice feeling uh, talking with you because, as I said, you, you're, like, uh, you're easy to talk with, very interesting, very spiritual, very feminine. <laughs> so thank you, <laughs> Stephanie, for having been on the show. It was a real pleasure and learning experience. Joseph, this has been delightful. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you also, my listeners, uh, for joining us today. Uh, the recap of the show, as mentioned, with the bullet points is all in the show notes, particularly the website, femininelight.com. Um, it's also on ombythebeach.com and all the major podcasts. Of course, if you like this podcast, please subscribe to have you here again for our next episode. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald. Thank you and goodbye until we meet again. Thank mm-hmm. you.